The World Cup is in full swing. Multiple footballing nations across the world compete in this storied tournament to achieve the elusive trophy. Amongst the nations is the five times world champion Brazil. See, Brazil is a country with an insane passion for football, no one knows more about football than they do. Unfortunately, such passion, sometimes, transforms into aggression, and even violence such as in the case of today's story. This is Dr. Thrills presenting to you the case of Otavio Jordeo da Silva Cantan Heed, a passion-driven lynching. In PO12, a town that lies in Maranhos, a northeastern state of Brazil, 19-year-old Cantan Heed left on his bike for the neighborhood of Centro do Mayo, located a few miles away down a red dirt road from his house. There, he arrived at a lumpy football field that had wooden posts with no nets. He met up with some friends as well as some locals and they began to play pick-up football, an informal football game. In such games in Brazil, to identify each other, one team usually wears shirts while the other is bare-chested. A group of spectators sat on the muddy ground beside, watching the game. During the first half of the game, Cantan he'd played on defense. A few minutes in, he twisted his ankles. Though minor, this injury rendered him unable to continue playing the game and he became the referee instead. Soon, the first half ended. Both teams rested on the muddy ground, guzzling what was left of their bottle. The match was tense. Kentan he'd signaled the start of the second half and the players began another 45 minutes of football. 15 minutes into the game, after a bad foul, Cantan he'd raised his hand, holding a yellow card to Josemir Santos Abreu, a friend of his. In footballing terms, a yellow card is just a warning, a second yellow card will result in a red card, meaning that the player will be sent off. Upon receiving his yellow card, Abreu was unhappy and argued with Cantan he'd and was issued a second yellow for dissent, resulting in him being sent off. Abreu was furious at this point, the argument escalated into a lethal fight. Cantan Heed was a short and scrawny young man and stood no chance against the 30-year-old Abreu. In the sea of panic and fear, Cantan Heed pulled out a pocket knife that he tucked into his shorts before the game, and Abreu was stabbed twice. A large amount of blood was oozing out of his wound. Upon seeing the stabbing, the crowd, of which some were Abreu's friends and relatives, ran towards Cantan Heed and restrained him, tying him up. Abreu was picked up and rushed to the hospital by one of his friends. Surrounding the now restrained Cantan Heed, many of Abreu's friends who were drunk and possibly on drugs, began attacking Cantan Heed. The attacks grew more violent as Cantan Heed screams in terror. First, he was smashed in the face with a bottle of cheap sugarcane liquor, then pummeled with wooden stakes and even ran over by a motorcycle. The killing blow comes when he was finally stabbed in the throat, relieving him of his hellish agony. Yet, the crowd continued to disfigure what was left of Cantan Heed's body. He was quartered and decapitated. His head was placed on a wooden fence. It was a doing unseen since the medieval ages. When the police finally arrived, one suspect was arrested. Two more people that the police were searching for, including Abreu's brother, had fled the scene. On the way to the hospital, Abreu had succumbed to his wound and died on his way to the hospital. There remain images online of the aftermath of Cantan Heed's body that is far too gory for YouTube. On this day, football, a game that was meant to connect people, had led to the unfortunate death of two men. In the lead-up to his investigation, lead investigator Walter Costa commented. I didn't think human beings had such perverseness to do this. One crime will never justify another.